Hey YouTube, Jack here. I am back. As I promised, the hairs have been cut. The gray is showing, but uh, it's, a, it's a good day. It's a cold Monday morning, and I have a quick announcement about this week and next week. So this week, I'm definitely going to do at least two, maybe three. We'll see how things are going by Friday episodes of Jack's Low Carb Journey. Next week, there will be exactly zero. Uh, next week is my big week for my uh, my workshops. This is where I end up uh, with about 45 students and 15, 20 odd staff members, over 60 people on my property for like five days. And even though they don't start showing up till Wednesday, you can imagine the week of is hysterical. So what's going to happen is Monday through Friday next week, I won't even be doing my main podcast, which is my main business. Like I do this, uh, the low carb journey stuff. I'm doing it for two reasons. One, personal accountability. If I have to look at you guys all the time, I'm going to stick to my shit. I have a goal. I want to get down in the 190s, uh, which I have not weighed in the 190s since I was in my 20s. And I'm almost 50. So that's a hell of a goal. I am getting there, guys, though. I, I, I'm doing way in Wednesdays now, so I can't tell you what happened over the weekend, but it was pretty good. Uh, will I bring in that big plate on Wednesday? I don't know. My guess is no, but I'll be like, just like I said, like that close to it. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I will not be doing episodes at all next week. I just don't have the time to cater to that many people and what have you. But I will be back the following week. I promise you I will do that, and... Um, Hopefully by then I'll get things kind of squared away enough that we can also launch this as a podcast using uh, these first, maybe I, I, I'm thinking getting up to 50 might be cool, just add like 50 Genesis episodes. I'm uh, I'm not OCD, but I'm big on numeric patterns and I don't like odd numbers of things. I don't like like 43 Genesis episodes. I, mean, I, I think I would sit up awake at night going, I, I, I can't believe there's 43 of them, like two years from now. You know, I just can't believe this. So, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Um, we're going to talk about more about keto on a budget. I know just a week ago I talked about that. I've probably done two two total episodes. This will be three now on keto on a budget. But I think this is a really important subject that we need to keep talking about, especially since people find this channel and have not seen the other 40-odd episodes, right? So the number one things that I think cause people to fail – with keto as a diet, a form of diet, and with paleo, which is sort of kind of like keto, but maybe is, maybe isn't. Uh, but all of these forms, and I, I mean all of it, I mean keto, everything that's kind of low carb or low carb by product, Whole30, paleo, primal, all of it. There's, there's three things. One, a lack of understanding of what the hell you're supposed to actually be eating. You know, if you're sitting there gobbling down 40 giant cheese pizza balls every day, but they're keto, you don't really understand what you're trying to do for your body. Uh, and there's a lot more that goes to that. This is just one example, but lack of education. That's one thing I'm trying to cure with this series. Um, number two is they're just not committed. There are people that are just not committed and they will excuse themselves into failure. I don't really like the food. Well, you liked the food last week when you weren't doing keto. When I took the french fries away, the pork chop didn't stop being a pork chop. Right, so there's that one, and then there's the third one, and this is the the, the most legitimate reason because it's free to cure your ignorance. Because there are so many people like me out here doing this, and there's people that are way smarter than me. Uh, Tom Delore is a great channel to check out. Keto Connect. Uh, there's just so much information available for free, so it's easy to cure your ignorance, and two, your willpower and your determination and your commitment to yourself. That's on you. But the third one is expense. Because no matter how I try to slice and dice this, pun intended, it is the case that I can feed a shitload of people on $5 a day if I'm going to feed them rice and bread and stuff like that and beans. You know, if you, especially if you're willing to buy in bulk, you know, you can go buy a 50 pound sack of rice, 50 pound sack of beans and some seasonings and stuff and a tiny little bit of meat. And when it comes to just putting calories in people, it might be junk, but you can do it cheap. And there's a lot of other ways, you know, potatoes, the, the big things we stay away from are the big five carbohydrate crops that feed most of the world. And because they feed most of the world, because they're commodity based, they're cheap. And when I was really young, like when I first moved to Texas, I'm talking like I was 21 years old, right out of the army, that type of thing. Um, 
you know, I survived. I'll be honest. I survived on the dollar menu at Taco Bell, the dollar menu at Jack in the Box, ramen noodles, stovetop stuffing, and whole chickens. That Those five things let me live on almost no money. And if you're in that state and you have to, I understand. But if you want to live on keto, let's talk about 10 suggestions I have to try to make keto as affordable as possible. Because it's, it's the thing that you actually have to solve. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. I will say if you tune into my survival podcast, you might learn how to make your money go further all around and then for, have more money for this. You might learn how to make more money and manage more money and do better things with money. I'll just throw a little commercial in there for myself on that. Okay, start off. First, remember, like I said last week, elimination of waste is probably more important than how much you pay for the food. There are so many people that, you know, they buy food and they eat some of it and then the leftovers go to waste. Or they buy like a big thing of salad because the big thing's smaller, cheaper per ounce than the small thing. And then half of that salad gets thrown into compost, the garbage, to, you know, birds in the backyard or whatever. So you got to always be thinking about what can I do to make sure that it's close to 100% of the food that I bring into my home goes into my body or my family's body and as close to zero as possible goes into whatever form of disposal we use. That right there will take things up a huge notch. And I have been flow on this myself because I get spoiled sometimes because we do do okay financially. But I try to be the guy that every day when I'm going to have lunch, I go through the kitchen uh, refrigerator. What is in here? What is in here that is a leftover that I can use for lunch today? And don't let that go to waste. And so that's one thing. And I keep saying it, but I'm going to keep saying it. Frozen vegetables are a huge waste. That's point two. Use frozen vegetables. They cost less. They don't go to waste. If you go out and buy like two or three heads of broccoli when it's on sale and you get tired eating broccoli this week and you're like, I'm going to go carnivore for a couple days or whatever you decide to do. You know, all of a sudden you pull that broccoli out, it's like slimy and stinky and and it's expensive really when you think about what it is. You're buying a flower. That's what broccoli is. It's an unopened flower. And you're buying all this money for this really great vegetable. It's an open flower and now you're throwing it away or you're composting it or whatever. When you do frozen, that just doesn't happen. If you decide I'm I'm done with broccoli for a week, just make sure that you have it well protected in the freezer. Uh, Vacuum sealers are great. I think they should be your friend. But if nothing else, you know, just good quality Ziploc bags. On that, here's a bonus saving me. Do you know that you can use a zip top bag like a Glad or whatever, and you can take food out of it, and then you can put other food back into it and use it again? Did you know you can do that until such time as like the bag ruptures or something has a problem? Don't throw your Ziploc bags away after one use. Now, if you had something in there like raw chicken or something, it's probably, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I throw those away. But if I have anything, that's, especially if like I have this food in a package that's insufficient to protect the food once it's been opened. So I put the food in its own packaging into a Ziploc. Man, I will use that for Ever. Why would I throw that away? It's not a single-use container. Keep using it over and over. Tupperware, too, you know, instead of Ziploc bags when you can. You wash it, put it back in the refrigerator, right? Um, and, hey, goodwill for that shit. Lots of people get rid of that stuff. As long as they have some matching lids, throw it in the dishwasher, make sure it's clean. That'll save money, too. So food storage, like, save money on it wherever you can. Uh, but frozen food is, is exp- inexpensive. And there are a lot of organic options in, in the frozen food section. Go look for them, and you'll find they're not that much more expensive. I'm a big fan of Albertsons. It's the main grocery store we go to, and they have a lot of their house organics. It's just called Organics brand um, that is really, really affordable. Um, on Albertsons, and you know, you might have grocery stores that have similar things in your area. I want to tell you a story. My wife, who doesn't give a damn about football, has a really cute Dallas Cowboys jersey. Uh, I am a... Pittsburgh Steelers fans, we are the mortal enemy of the Dallas Cowboys, having won most of the Super Bowls we played against them, uh, and having more rings than the uh, the Cowboys have. Uh, and my wife doesn't care about sports at all, so why does she have a pink, cute Cowboys jersey? Because our Albertsons gives you 10% off game day Sundays for the Cowboys if you wear a Cowboys jersey. 
So we bought her a cute little $30 jersey and our first $200 grocery bill, 20 bucks of it came back to us. Every single Sunday that the Cowboys are playing, we get our 10% off. That's the day we go grocery shopping that week and she wears her cute little Cowboys jersey. We get 10% off. Well, I just noticed when we were leaving there on Sunday where we didn't get our 10% off because the Cowboys didn't play this week, um, that they had a thing for the Texas Rangers. She's getting a Texas Rangers jersey too, guys. There's 14 home games on Sundays this year for the Texas Rangers. It's a baseball team for those who don't follow sports. I don't care about the Rangers. I don't care about baseball. I'm sorry. To me, baseball is the most boring game on planet Earth. But if I can go get her a $20 Texas Rangers shirt, I'll get her a cute pink one because she likes that. And 14 times we can save 10% on our groceries. Even if our average grocery bill was 100 bucks and it's more than that, that's $140. So figure out the things that can save you money on all your food, not just your keto food. That one was stupid easy to do. I mean, you do the math on both of those, and I'm like, do y'all do anything for the Mavericks? Because I'll get one of those too. So just check on all these programs that are available that you can save money on. I don't know if they do that everywhere. Texas really loves their sports, but check into it. Um, Next, get creative with your leftovers. You know, learn to make soups, man. Soups is probably one of the best things you can do. And I'm just going to say this. Thyme and rosemary are your friend. You can make a soup with just about anything. Throw some thyme and rosemary in there and make it even better. Uh, Especially if you have a mortar and pestle and you kind of grind up that rosemary. Or I have a uh, coffee grinder that I use just for spices. It was like 10 bucks. You know, and you can find those at Goodwill too, by the way, if you don't want to buy a brand new one. And so whenever I have like spices and seasonings that are like seedy or larger. I throw them in there and pulse them right before I... Now, I don't do this in advance. <clears throat> right when I'm cooking with them, and that brings more flavor to the party. That way you enjoy your leftovers more. But man, get good at making soups. And if you don't know what to do, just take a bunch of leftovers, and unless it seems like a really bad idea, throw some shit in there and see what happens. Uh, I've made some really delicious soups lately that when you look at it, you're like, that's kind of crazy. No, it's not. Uh, It really comes out pretty good. Uh, I said one of the things I survived on when I was broke. And when I talk about broke, I was broke. Like there's broke, there's broke ass, and there's seriously freaking broke. I was like right below seriously freaking broke. I was broke when I first moved to Texas. And, you know, when I figured out I could buy them back, then you could buy a whole chicken for like three bucks, a big one. Now it's more like five to seven dollars. Like, I can eat a week on one chicken. I learned how to make, you know, chicken enchiladas. I learned how to make chicken soup. I'm, if you can do it with chicken, I learned how to do it. And the cheapest way to buy chicken is to buy whole chicken. Now, I know we would prefer pastured poultry or at least organic. And even if you're going to go and step up to organic, a whole organic chicken costs less than parted out organic chicken. Got it? But if you are really struggling to stay on a budget... And maybe, you know, you buy one whole chicken a month and you try to blend your your organic and pastured meats with some regular meat. Hey, you're still ahead. And that would be one of the places your bang for the buck would be the best on going and buying a factory meat product until you can figure a way to do a little bit better. Uh, Whole chickens. Learn to take a chicken apart. Learn to use every piece of the chicken. If you don't have enough chicken bones to make a stock or you want to make more stock, take all your chicken bones, throw them in one of those Ziploc bags. Remember, that is the one to probably throw it away. And save up until you have a big-ass, you know, gallon-sized bag full of bones. Then make your chicken stock. You can make a huge vat of bone stock with that and use it in a bunch of other recipes. Use whole chickens. Um... Next, used canned fish. I discovered recently these Wild wild Planet canned mackerel. They're $3 a can on Amazon. This stuff is not like tuna. and it, I'm sorry, not like sardines. I thought it would be, but I like sardines. So I'm like, well, I'll try these because mackerels are really great, high-quality, high-nutrition fish. And don't confuse Atlantic mackerel with, like, king mackerel. King mackerel is a top predator fish. They get huge they eat lots of prey. They live a long time, so they acu- they bioaccumulate mercury. Atlantic salmon, a giant Atlantic salmon is like a pound and a half. That average size Atlantic salmon that's harvested is about three quarters to one pound. Um, for a big part of their life, they live mostly on plankton. As they get bigger, they do become small predators, but then they're eating very small 
uh, like Manhattan and stuff like that. So they have a very low accumulation of mercury. They're a fish that is safe to eat multiple times a week without having any danger for mercury. Pregnant women and people with certain health conditions, you got to work that out for yourself. Average person, you can eat mac, you know, Atlantic mackerel two, three times a week without any real concerns. Huge, huge storehouse of omega threes. Pa- and the three dollar cans, it's packed in olive oil. Now you have fish flavored olive oil. Use that for salad dressings. Use that to cook with. It's awesome. Um, the 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 Wild Planet mackerel. My God, I have uh, really fallen in love with that stuff. I made a salad the other day, and I did like some some pecans in it, some pine nuts, just some organic greens. I did the mackerel broken up on top of it, some crumbled cheese. Um, I used the olive oil itself, just the oil that was in with the mackerel, just drizzled that all over the salad. Salt and pepper. Uh, I had some applewood smoked olives, which, yeah, they're kind of pricey, but, you know, when you take one olive or two olives out and slice them up, what do you got there? Like 13 cents, maybe less, probably a nickel. So I had those on it, and when I when I got there with the salad, I looked at it and said, you know, I know some, like, artsy-fartsy restaurant places where they would tout the sustainability and health benefits of this mackerel, and they would sell, sell this salad for like $18 and people would buy it. And I'm sitting here eating it for like $4.50. Yeah. So you can do this on a budget and eat very well. And every single person that looked at the picture of that salad on Facebook was like, man, I'm not big on canned fish, but that looks amazing. Make your food look good too, guys. That'll make you enjoy it more. And that'll make you feel like you're spoiling yourself. Remember, I always say, people say, why do you put so much effort into making your food look great? Like, is it just because you take pictures and put on Instagram or Facebook or whatever? No, I make my, when I don't take a picture of my food, I still make it look as good as I can. Because when somebody comes to my house and I want to spoil them, not only do I cook well for them, but I also make the food look good. Well, I care about me and I want to spoil me too. And if you feel like you're spoiling yourself, then dieting is easy because you're not dieting. You're spoiling yourself. Uh, Next, when meat is on sale, buy the crap out of it. Watch for meat sales, whether it's like really high grade, high quality grass fed, or if you're eat, even if you're going to eat factory, then when like you know I have meat mad, meat madness Monday or something at your market, buy the crap out of whatever meat it is you eat whenever it's on sale. I mean, two dollars a pound off is a big deal when it comes to meat. Watch for it. I had some great deals I got this weekend. They had a ten ounce. Uh, buffalo sirloins on sale at Albertsons for $4.99. I bought a bunch of them. I said, why are you buying so much? I'm like, this is $4.99. And those are all cryovac and everything. So I just brought them home, pitched them in the deep freezer. Uh, they had the lamb on sale for $5.99 as well. For a, a pound of ground lamb, it's normally like 7 bucks. The ground beef was actually marked up. They didn't say we marked it up, but it was like a dollar higher. Uh, the grass-fed $85.15. So I'm like, I'll rely on Butcher Box for that this month. But what was on sale, I bought. Um, they have the lamb, sh- lamb shoulder chops. I keep talking about these things. Uh, this is like the most terrible cut of meat that you can turn into the most wonderful cut of meat if you have a sous vide cooker. Uh, lamb fat has that really strong lamby taste that a lot of people don't like. People call it gamey. Don't don't call it gamey. Gamey is like saying you burn something and you called it black and they try to cover it up. Gamey is not a flavor. There are six flavors in your mouth. Gamey is not one of them. But there is a strong, astringent, not astringent, a strong, assertive quality to lamb fat when there's a lot of lamb fat. If you slow cook lamb shoulders, that really goes away. And for some reason, with the sous vide cooker, which is a thing, is immersion cooker that cooks in hot water, you wrap the food in a bag, it's like God cooked for you about five hours at 140 degrees. And they had lamb shoulder, the thing is, a lot of times it's not available. And they had big packets of it. So I got a couple big packs, broke it down, froze it. Um, now remember, lamb, you don't have to look for grass-fed. You don't have to look for organic. You don't have to look for any of that. No one, there's no such thing as a lamb CAFO. It doesn't, like, it just economically doesn't make sense to feed grain to lambs, right? Lambs are fed grass. That's what they do. They leave them with their mothers. They get up to a, a little over a year, and they're like a half-grown sheep, you know, bolt in the head lamb on the plate, and they, they lamb in the commercial market is raised for leg and loin. That's what it's, it's, that's the, the high-end cuts. That's where all the money comes from. That front shoulder is so much fat in it 
that if you make a ground lamb out of it, you end up with something like a 60-40 mix, which just isn't a good ground product. So they use the rest of the trimmings, and they use those upper shoulders where all that fat is on a lamb, and they just sell it. They just bandsaw it, basically. They freeze it and bandsaw it into these flat strips like a pork butt. And it's like, again, it's a cut of meat that's so stupid cheap because nobody wants it. But I'm telling you, people figure out what to do with a sous vide cooker. It's going to go up in price. Because I could put that on a menu at a restaurant and I'd have them lined out the door with it. You know, and get creative with that lamb then. Like lamb in Moroccan seasoning. There's a seasoning called Ras Al Hunut. Um, it's fairly pricey, but you only use a little bit of it. Ras Al Hunut on that, sous vide cooked. Oh, Give it a try. Put that over some cauliflower rice and then take all the juice with that Ras Al Hunut seasoning and drizzle that on your cauliflower rice. You'll actually think it's rice because the seasonings will take over and you won't taste the cauliflower part that I'm not exactly a fan of. Um, next, learn to make sausage. See, the most affordable grass-fed options that we have are lamb and grass-fed beef, right? Those are the two that, of all the meats that you can in general get at a good price is the ground meat. Well, how many hamburgers can you eat before you're like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of eating hamburger. And if it's a patty... It's a hamburger, and if it's rolled up in little pieces, it's little pieces of hamburger. And if I cook it as a hamburger, chop it up, put it in my salad, it's a hamburger. It's hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. And lamb burger is basically a lot like hamburger. But if we start learning to make sausage, if we start getting some you know, fatty cuts of good organic pork, and we take some of that pork fat and we integrate that into our beef or our lamb to add fat to it. If we can get a hold of some really good organ meats like liver and kidney, whether it be pork, beef, I don't care, right? And we use that at about a 10% ratio to the whole. So let's say we had about 10 pounds of grass-fed beef. Let's say we're going to make a lot. Like you can make, and I'll get to that in a second. You can make little bats. I make sausage on the fly all the time. It's not hard. It's just mixed meat with seasonings. But if we were going to do, let's say, start with 10 pounds of ground beef, we got a great deal on it. We're going to make, you know, sausage out of that 10 pounds. Well, then we want to use about a pound to a pound and a half of organ meat. And then we want to use about two pounds of a really fatty meat. We can do this by, you know, I got a hold of some really good brisket, grass-fed brisket, and it was untrimmed. So I trimmed some of the fat off of it because it was more fat than it needed. And I chunk that up and put that in my freezer so we can pull some of that fat into the mix and just use beef fat up the fat for the sausage. But we can also use pork, you know, inexpensive fatty pork. We want the fattiest stuff we can get, um, organic fat back, etc. Or we can use factory if we have to. And mix that in with that red meat, that lamb or that beef. And we can make anything from like a Mexican style chorizo to like a Cajun and do it. And all of a sudden now this ground beef product that's affordable, it becomes it, whatever you want it to be. And when I say you can make it small scale, here's what I mean by that. So last week I wanted to make a soup. And I was like, it would be really cool to make kind of like a chorizo soup. But Mexican chorizo, even though it tastes good, is garbage. If you go to the store and you buy these tubes, it's just gross. You cook it and you look at it. Yeah, you put eggs in there. It tastes good, but it's gross. What it's, I don't know what the hell they make it with, but it ain't just me. But a beef chorizo is really easy to make. So I had a pound of ground beef. I'm like, oh, I don't need a pound. So I cut it in half. I had eight ounces of ground beef. I looked up a recipe for chorizo, modified it a little bit to make it my own, threw all the seasonings in, mixed it up. Mixed it really good. When you make a sausage, the difference between like a meatball or a meatloaf, you want to mix it till the fat starts to emulsify with the protein. How will you know? Your fingers will have this really kind of coating you'll have to scrub pretty hard to get off. It's okay. And uh, when that happens, you've got to kind of crossed over to the sausage world. Well, then I just took those little bitty meatball-sized pieces. I fried them up, took them out, used that as my seasoning for my soup base. Threw some broth in it. The other things I wanted, threw it back in, simmered it, chorizo soup. Easy. That fast. Different than just beef, but I was only paying the beef price. Because what's in there? It's 15 cents worth of seasonings? Buy your seasonings in bulk, too. Uh, next, learn to cut meat. If you learn to do your own meat cutting, you'll find sometimes you can buy full cuts or partial like quarters of a beef product or a pork product and do your own cuts out of them. I won't say much more on that, but 
I'll just say it's a really great skill to have, and it's a really good idea if you want to do this, that if you have like an extra refrigerator or something, clear enough space, keep the temperature in that refrigerator like where if it's any colder, shit's going to start freezing on you. Put that cut of meat in there and cut it when it's as cold as possible. If you have a deep freezer with some space and all, and you can put it on something so it doesn't make meat juice go on other things, you throw it in the freezer for like 15 minutes before you start cutting. Yeah, it kind of hurts your fingers and all, but it's so much easier to cut frozen or you know, not frozen, almost frozen meat. The harder it is, the nicer the cuts you'll get. Um, just learn to do that, and you'll find that you can, again, you know, you can get things like a full uh, ribeye roast, and you cut your own ribeyes to your own specifications. Uh, but with that, then you, when you do your trimming, if you, especially if you get like a grass-fed product, you have all this amazing extra fat that you can save for your sausages and other things. So there's that. And then sometimes prepared foods are cheaper in spite of, you know, learn how to cut up a chicken and all. Um, I have determined, for instance, this weekend at the grocery store, I found zucchini noodles in the freezer section. Uh, jury's out. I have not tried a pre- prior frozen zucchini noodle yet. I don't know if it's going to lose anything with texture or whatever, but man, it was cheaper than buying fresh zucchini and making my own. And then the clamshells they sell in the produce section of the zucchini and, and squash and whatever noodles. Um, I don't know why, but they're less expensive than buying the zucchini and making your own zoodles. So you, you when you're ever you're looking at something like that, ask yourself like, what is really the, mo- the least expensive way to go? I like to make fermented garlic, and I use that in cooking, and I use that in my salads, and sometimes I just eat a piece of fermented garlic. So I like for that, you know, I'm gonna like I'm gonna ferment a quart of garlic at the same time. Um, Albertsons hasn't had them lately, but they usually have these clamshells, and it's like a quart of garlic already peeled for like four dollars. I can't buy garlic in quantity. And peel it and end up with that much for $4. It costs less to buy what they have already done the work on for me. Plus, I don't have to do the work. This will not always be the case. But when it comes down to it, this is my big message overriding for people on a budget. Do the math. Always do the math. Always work the numbers out. All right, that wraps things up for today. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments below. If you have an episode you'd like to have me do, something you would like me to talk about, tell me what it is. About half of the episodes I've done have come directly from people asking me here on YouTube. I want to know more about this thing. Uh, And I will try to get one out for you. Remember, I will be here Wednesday. I might be here Friday. I will not be here next week. But then I will be back on our regularly scheduled programming. Until then, remember, the cause, love, and solution to all your problems is that person staring back at you in the mirror. On the floor, in that bathroom where that mirror is, is probably your scale. It can be your friend or it can be your enemy. The better you take care of yourself, the more you'll get along with that scale. Take care, guys. I'll catch you on Wednesday.